Um, what happened was that Alonzo, the anecdotal story is, and I can't prove this with any writings, uh, but that Alonzo said, what difference does it make whether it's whether it's Auburn or Lewis? And uh, in any event, in the final vote, Auburn got the most votes, and so Auburn became the Shire town for Androscoggin County. But in several papers I've read about it, it he's called the father of Androscoggin County. Senator Fry was his brother-in-law, right? What's that? Senator Fry was his brother-in-law. William Fry was his brother-in-law. What happened is Alonzo married uh, Edith Spear, uh, Olivia Spear. Uh, she was from Rockland, Maine, and William Fry, who was 15 years younger than Alonzo, married Carolyn Spear, uh, Olivia's sister. So they were they were uh, brother-in-laws. And uh, what's also interesting about that is. Alonzo had his, his youngest daughter, who was the daughter of uh, Olivia Spear, uh, never married. And uh, uh, stories tell about how she used to go down and visit her aunt and uncle down in Washington, D.C. when William Fry was down there. Yes, John. The Garcelon building on uh, Lisbon Street, does that tie into to your family? I'm not even familiar with what's called the Garcelon building. Yeah, it's down on Lisbon Street. I've seen the, the name plate above. I can't even place it precisely, but... I don't know. Doug could probably tell I, you. I believe it was owned by Barbara Garcelon. Okay, but Barbara... Anything right. Barbara would have been... Barbara would have been uh, Alonzo the Force... Alonzo the Force uh, sister. She never married. She taught at Bates. She lived here in Auburn. Uh, she probably, she inherited a lot of land, and, and Barbara was one that had a lot of letters, and I don't know where those have gone. I think Alonzo Gasson the fifth, who lives in Augusta, uh, had them. But Barbara would have owned it by virtue of it came down in the family. So I don't know. Uh, there were lots of buildings, and I mean, there was George Gasson, who was a druggist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Alonzo and William Waldron had a building where the Lewiston Falls Journal was. Right. And I understand that was called the Gaslam Building at one time. Uh, you know, I I couldn't believe it. I was flying from Boston as a land surveyor. I used to do some pretty big jobs, and we were going to do that 93-mile power line from the Canadian border to, down into North Jay that was going to tie into Hydro Quebec. And so I'm a pilot, and I but I hired I was working in Boston time, and I hired the. Uh, my old instructor had come down and pick us up at Hanscom Field. And my assistant and I get in the plane and we're flying up and I got this map out. And this is the first time I realized this. I, I got this map out and I sat laughing my head off and, and Dave, my uh, Nichols, my instructor who was flying with me, says, what are you laughing about? And I said, well, we got a bog named after us. There's a castle of bog right down here that showed up on this flight map. And I couldn't believe it. I said, well, I'm not sure I'm going to brag about that one. <laughs> yes? That period, 1850 to 1900, is when many of the banks around here were formed. Was he involved in any of them? Uh, I know some he was not involved with, but was involved with some. I, I honestly don't know. I suppose I could look at Brian's book and find it out, but not known for it. Not known for it. But he was very much known for getting capitalists to come from the Boston area. There were some gas lines that went down to Boston. And you've got to bear in mind that down east, when we talk about down east Maine, it's talking about sailing downwind from Boston up along the coast by Canada and then going over to England. That's where the expression comes from, is you're sailing from the Boston area along the main coast and you're going east. And down east simply means because it's downwind. And so nobody in this area, in the early days of this area, everyone was seamen. James was a seaman. I mean, he came up here and started the shipyard and the son William took it over down there in Freeport. Uh, so Boston was almost like home port to a lot of people in Maine. Okay. And uh, so they knew the people there. Let's face it, the letter his father wrote from was to Paulus Um uh, It was hard for them to separate it. In the early days, it wasn't. It was called Boston, New England. And uh, it was called Falmouth, New England. 
a thing called Falmouth, Maine. It was called Falmouth, New England. And so they were sort of inseparable. Uh, you didn't think of Boston as being the flatlanders, you know, don't know anything about Maine because you're from Boston. Well, back in those days, uh, most of the people came from Maine, came from Gloucester, Salem, uh, New Gloucester is named after Gloucester, so on and so forth. Uh, so Alonzo, as worldly wise as he became very quickly, uh, knew these people. And William Walden was from Boston. William Walden, who started the Lewis and Paul's Journal, had been on a newspaper, working for a newspaper in Boston. And that's how Alonzo convinced him to come up here and help him start a newspaper, because he knew William knew the newspaper business. And that was sort of an interesting story that, that uh, uh, William knew of a press down in Boston. So he went and bought the press, and they had it shipped by ship. They came up by ship to Freeport, and then Alonzo's father, William, went down with an ox cart and hauled the press from Freeport to Lewiston, and then the next day they printed the first issue of the Lewiston Falls Journal. My wife is telling me to wrap it up, so I'll wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you for coming. See you next year, if not before.